Karen, was uh, is is Mark uh, joining you as well, Karen? Yeah, we just decided to sign up on one computer instead of two. Okay, good thinking. Well, hello to you, Mark, as well. Hello. I'll keep it on mute so it's not so uh, noisy background. Sure, thank you so much. I, I think, Rob, uh, your scenery there, I, I'm hearing a bit of wind, possibly from your screen and possibly from uh, someone else's. We may uh, we may try to just, uh, you know, we'll, we'll try to, I'll just ask that everybody try to be a little bit patient uh, with each other here tonight. Uh, sometimes the technology can be a little bit uh, unpredictable and and sometimes sometimes even uh, unforgiving. Uh, but if, if you would like to have something repeated, certainly feel free to raise your hand and ask to have uh, part of the conversation repeated if, if let's say the audio was cutting out or the video was getting choppy. Also feel free to use the chat box uh, which is uh, which is visible if you move toward the up toward the top of your screen there's a little hand icon so you could use that to raise your hand if you wish in, in the digital sense and just to the left of that is a button that says show conversation and that will show the chat box just to the right. So if you uh, have a question that pops in your mind during the middle of a presentation, feel free to just type that out if you wish, just to, to get that thought down on, on uh, paper, so to speak. Uh, we'll just let you know that the uh, you may see a, a, a notice near the top of your screen saying that recording has started. So we just ask uh, everyone to be mindful of that. Uh, We'll, uh, we'll try to keep profanity to a minimum uh, because uh, recording has started and uh, just uh, look forward to having a good, positive, uh, productive and informative uh, public meeting with everybody. So uh, with that in mind, it looks like we've got uh, pretty much everybody that had wanted to attend the meeting. So at uh, 6.02 p.m. here on uh, on Thursday, August the 20th, uh, we'll call the, the public meeting to order and uh, we thank everyone for coming here tonight. As noted, my name is Myron Belay and I'm the Planning and Economic Development Specialist with the Township of Augusta. Uh, also on video from the Township, uh, actually in the Township office uh, in another uh, room in our in our Council Chambers is Ray Morrison, who is our CAO and Treasurer. Uh, from the applicant's side, uh, we have uh, Rob Thompson from Rob Thompson Developments. And uh, I see I see Tyler Verkirk from uh, from Rob's team as well is in attendance tonight. Uh, I see from the consulting team uh, at IBI Group, we have Bill Thomas uh, in attendance and uh, Tess, Gil Tess Gilchrist is in uh, attendance tonight. Uh, Mayor Doug Malanka, welcome. Uh, we see you've just joined the meeting as well. And uh, attending, we have Karen uh, Richardson Norris and uh, her uh, her husband, I believe, Mark, and uh, we have Bob Myers uh, in attendance. Uh, I know Bob. I think you had mentioned that uh, Nancy may be. Uh, She's maybe, on uh, route. She's about five ten minutes away. She's just crossing the border. Okay, so so Nancy will be joining us as well. And depending if uh, Brent Ward is able to resolve the uh, the audio issues on his side, he may be rejoining us uh, behind Ray. Uh, for those of you who hadn't heard yet, uh, we have Jonas Cole from uh, the Augusta uh, community joining us as well. So that's everyone in attendance. Uh, Hi, Myron. Uh, actually, Brent joined us here at the house, so we're all we're three now. <laughs> OK, that's that's tremendous. Uh, well, Brent, welcome back to the meeting. Uh, if it's tough with uh, the three of you on the audio together, uh, feel free to just you know click the raise the hand icon or to type in the chat box if you'd like us to repeat anything. So. Thank you everyone so much for attending tonight. Um, I'm going to open up a presentation here and uh, in our dry run earlier today, this worked out pretty well. I'm going to go over to my second screen and load that up and I'll just ask in a second if everyone is able to see the presentation. All right, so how are we doing for the presentation? Are we able, is uh, is anyone not able to see the PowerPoint presentation on their screen? Good, good, we'll take that as a yes, I, unless there may be folks on mute that, uh, that, that I wasn't able to hear at that particular moment, but uh, we're welcoming everybody to a public meeting tonight uh, for the Township of Augusta to, to discuss a zoning bylaw amendment application 
for the property municipally known as 1686 County Road 2. And uh, that is right on the Augusta Prescott border. Uh, this is a public meeting that's required under Section 34 of the Planning Act. And uh, public notice provide, uh, is to be provided as per Ontario Regulation 54506 at least 20 days in advance uh, of the meeting, uh, which we did. So quick agenda here just to give you an idea of how we'll how we'll proceed tonight. Uh, for, for myself, we're going to be opening the, the public meeting with a little bit of an introduction to the to the property. Uh, at that point, we'll invite the uh, applicant uh, and and uh, and potentially their other folks in their team to to make a presentation. I was sent two powerpoints uh, ahead of the meeting, and I've incorporated those both into my uh, slideshow here. So we're going to try to run it that way. Uh, I'll invite uh, whoever is going to be speaking from the team, whether Rob Thompson or someone else, to take over uh, the audio at that point, and just uh, invite me to uh, scroll through the presentation as we go. Uh, once we have that presentation, the township will offer uh, just a few comments based on our uh, review process to date. Uh, following that, we'll give uh, attendees, uh, folks in the audience here, residents, the opportunity to uh, initially to anyone that would like to speak in favor of the proposal may feel free to speak. There will also be an opportunity for those uh, to speak uh, to speak against the proposal. Uh, we did receive uh, one piece of correspondence. Uh, in advance of, of the meeting uh, from, from Bob and uh, and Nancy, I, I may uh, I may I may, may we'll, we'll, as we go here, we'll try to find a, a good place to uh, to to roll that in just to have the the applicant speak to to some of these questions that were raised. Uh, and then that's pretty much the the meeting. Uh, we do have a second meeting uh, after this. Uh, but uh, we will at that point thank everyone very much for attending and uh, for right from the outset here. Thank everyone for your uh, attention to our different presenters today and, and for participating in the public process. So here are a few standard advisements that we uh, that we include at the beginning of our different uh, for rezoning uh, bylaw meetings, for example, notices that uh, if if you're a person or a public body that doesn't make that does not make uh, a, a verbal and oral presentation uh, or a written submission to the Corporation of the Township of Augusta before uh, Council passes the bylaw, if they choose to do that, uh, then that person uh, is, is not entitled to uh, appeal the decision uh, of the Council to the Local Planning Appeals Tribunal. The second one is essentially saying that if a person or public body does not make an oral submission at the public meeting, uh, before the bylaw is adopted, if it is adopted, uh, then that person may not be added to as a party to any hearings of any potential appeals that may happen at the local planning appeals tribunal. Uh, for those of you that aren't familiar with that group, it was formerly known as the Ontario Municipal Board. Uh, and uh, there can be some circumstances where in the opinion, the opinion of that board, uh, that tribunal, that there could be reasonable grounds to add a person or public body as a party, but that's does, does not always happen. Now, if you wish to be notified of Council's decision on this proposed zoning bylaw amendment, uh, you must make a written request to the Township of Augusta that you could send that to uh, to uh, myself if you wish, if that's more convenient for you. And I would relay it to our clerk, who is uh, Annette Simonian, a Simonian at Augusta.ca, or you may feel free to email her directly uh, if you wish to be notified of Council's decision. So as far as the zoning bylaw amendment process goes, when the township receives a completed zoning bylaw amendment application, township goes through an initial review of it. We would share that and send that out to different peer review consultants and reviewing agencies or commenting agencies as appropriate. In this case, being on a county road, uh, the United Counties of Leeds and Grenville is aware of the proposal uh, bordering on the town of Prescott. The town of Prescott is aware of the uh, of the proposal and um, uh, who else? South Nation Conservation has been involved pretty much from the outset and uh, has provided comments to the effect that they they are supportive of the of the rezoning uh, proceeding. Uh, at that point, once the proponent <coughs> addresses initial comments, we proceed to the public meeting stage, which is where we're at today. 
do want to highlight that no decisions uh, are made at uh, at the public meeting. This is an opportunity to uh, to ask some questions, to express some concerns, to express some favor, uh, if that's your desire. And uh, after that, we would be reviewing any any public comments, taking a taking a last look at any peer review and agency comments that have come in uh, before uh, go, moving the application forward to a council meeting. Uh, if council did uh, uh, approve the decision, then there's an appeal period following that 20 days following council's decision uh, for for folks that let's say we're not happy with it to appeal it. Uh, there are there are fees involved in that. Likewise, if council were to turn down the proposal, there would be a 20 day appeal period uh, following that decision for, let's say, the applicant, for example, to uh, to appeal that. So just to reiterate the planning under the Planning Act, um, if you would like to be added as a party, potential party at a future date or, or have the opportunity to uh, be involved in in any sort of appeal process that may happen, you would need to make an oral presentation tonight, a verbal presentation tonight or or submit written comments prior to Council's decision being finalized again. There's a 20 day appeal period. Just clicking over to my other screen here because I see that uh, someone may be wishing to else may be wishing to join. OK, yeah, we see Nancy Lewis wanting to join, so we're just going to admit her to the meeting and sorry for that, folks. Going to jump back to the presentation. Uh, now are we still everybody can still see the presentation? I'm seeing yeses. OK, perfect. So the site location again that we're talking about is 1686 County Road 2. Here's a shot of it. Um, and what's being requested is a rezoning from the current residential village zoning to uh, a village residential special exception zone. And that exception is being requested to allow for the proposed use of 20 townhouse rental units, stack townhouse dwellings. Um, 10 of the units with attached garages and 10 of them with detached garages, a community building um, or kind of like a clubhouse building and six visitor parking spaces. Uh, we would note that uh, the size of the proposed garage buildings, um, although each individual uh, garage would um, would be within the permitted gross floor area of 100 square meters for accessory buildings in a residential zone. Uh, because they are on the, on the site attached together. Uh, technically, their size exceeds uh, the maximum permitted gross floor area of 100 meters squared for accessory buildings. So some relief uh, is being sought for that uh, and, and incorporating that into this zoning rezoning application. Uh, as well, the clubhouse building uh, that's proposed is uh, about 111.5 square meters, 11.5 square meters larger than uh, 100 meters squared that's that's generally uh, permitted so there's some relief being sought for that uh, mentioning that uh, alpine lodging some of you that have been in the community a long time may be familiar with that having been uh, running on the property previously with its different structures and dwellings uh, now we'll go on to the second portion of the meeting where uh, we'll invite the applicants to make a presentation uh, uh, Rob, will it be yourself that's uh, that's covering the next couple of PowerPoints, or would you have you assign that to someone else to take out from here? No, I'll take it. Okay, well, click through here to the first one, and we'll let you take it away. And if you want to just uh, invite me to to click uh, as appropriate, I'll be happy to help you with that. Okay, so Myron, thanks, Myron. Um, uh, Myron had just asked, you know, to give a com company history. This is a bit of a company history a realtor for many years. Uh, we have construction history. We're Terry on builders and um, and we're also in the hotel business and we've developed land um, and built several buildings. You can uh, the three companies on the side. Our main companies are hotels, uh, brokerage and uh, construction. Um, under our construction, we use a company called Sweetwater Homes. Uh, it's a company we own as well that is our Terry on licensing. Uh, this particular property will be rentals, our, um, and, and I'll get into that. So we, we will be using Rob Thompson Construction. Um, could you uh, change the screen, please, or move it along? So here's just a few things that I've built over the years. Uh, you may recognize them. Uh, Commercial Plaza in uh, Kempsville in the top left. Uh, it's called Creekside Center. It's right on Highway 43. 
downtown Brock or downtown Kempville uh, beside it, the lofts at Market Row we built in 2006. We took uh, 90 feet of the most derelict, um, unfortunate buildings uh, and tore them down and put in something what we consider to be reminiscent of um, of uh, Kingston uh, was our was our uh, model for that one. Um, the next one is a Montessori school. It's on 43. Um, down on the bottom left, 2005-2006 uh, was Susanna Lane uh, near the golf course uh, in Brockville. Um, Augusta Business Centre just up the road from where you sit. Uh, again, a derelict building. Uh, myself and uh, a partner, Chris McCorkle, turned that into um, kind of a thriving business now. Um, um, then uh, the meadows at St. Lawrence Court were on Center Street, again, just up from Susanna Lane. Uh, you can, uh, that was about, uh, I think that was about 30 homes. Then this one was, uh, this is a condominium that we built um, in 14 uh, behind um, Canadian Tire in Brockville uh, on the corner of Millwood and Majidoma on the way into the uh, Municipal Center or the Memorial Center, I guess. Uh, it was 12 units uh, and uh, et cetera. Um, Kempville Suites is one of our hotels. It was our first one. Um, kind of proud of it. It was just named top 25 small hotels in Canada two years in a row. We moved up from spot 21 to top 14 this year. So, and it was TripAdvisor. So, it's all based on um, on people's reviews. Uh, the next one, please. Our newest. Uh, oh, there's some interior shots of uh, Kempville Suites. And. 48 King West is our newest one. Uh, that is uh, the old corner of uh, King and Courthouse. Uh, it was the former Bank of Toronto building built in 1822. Or sorry, 1922. Um, and we've turned that into a boutique hotel and it's going quite well. You can, I think there's more interior shots of that maybe. Just a few more shots um, of some of the things that we've done. Uh, these is, these are four lots. Uh, we actually have five lots currently under construction. This is one of the houses that we're currently building under our Terry on program. Um, new homes to be sold. They're in and around the North Granville area. Uh, next one. This is a building. These are two buildings that uh, we may or may not build, but we've designed them in full. Uh, well, part, one in part, one in full. One is uh, the bottom one is uh, in Kempville, uh, the old bright spot parking lot. The branch restaurant is to the left hand side. It's quite an interesting project. We tried to blend it in with the with what is there uh, with downtown to make it reminiscent of an old factory building uh, using old brick, etc. Uh, there are loft apartments in the back. Um, the one on the top is a modern building that I would love to build because it's a pretty cool building that uh, Tyler and Brandy have come up with on our team. Um, uh, we, it would be uh, uh, the Millwood Project Phase 2. Um, we're not sure whether we're going to go with that or whether we're going to go with a bungalow townhouse design. Um, anyway, and I think that's the end of the end of who we are. And so on to Augusta Landing, um, why we're all here. Uh, so if we could go to the uh, site plan, I'm sure you've all seen it. Um, so you may be a little confused, uh, potentially, by if you saw the site plan and you said there's 12 units, it looks like there's only six units, and eight units, it looks like there's only four units. The idea behind this is essentially they are bungalow townhouses. And from the back, as you'll see in the next slides, but not just yet, Okay, that's okay. So, <laughs> so the goal here was to make the make the fronts uh, that face the road and the river look, not look like the back of two story townhouses um, or uh, bungalow townhouses with walkout basements, which essentially, from a construction point of view, of what they are. Um, we wanted it to look more like a uh, two story apartment building, a, con a pair of, of those, and so you could switch that. And I think we've done that because that certainly looks more like an apartment building than it does um, the um, uh, bungalow townhouses with walkout basements. And then if we go to the next one, the next slide, it'll give you an idea of if you're living on top, you will find that the uh, the um, it looks very much like a bungalow townhouse. So you have your garage 
uh, about 1,200 square feet of living space. The lower levels will have about 1,000 square feet of living space. And they will have, uh, since the lower levels won't have a garage, they'll have a detached garage. And those are the buildings on the left. At the extreme left, you'll see a little building with a porch all the way around it. And that's a clubhouse. Um, due to the views, due to the constraints on the property, because we have a setback, a pretty significant and serious setback that we obviously have uh, taken into consideration on our on our plan uh, to set back because of the water intake for Prescott. So um, it didn't give us an opportunity to have a clubhouse with views of the river. However, we wanted every unit to have a view of the river or as best of one that we could. So uh, we thought, well, what's our next best uh, attribute on this property? And the next best attribute is the sunsets. So that uh, building is oriented in the back uh, for sunset, so people can sit out and take advantage of that. Next slide, please. Um, just an, again, looking at it from the different view, this would be looking at it from uh, the Prescott side. And one more. Again, just one more set, and that's good. So there's, there's a, um, this is looking north. Uh, you can see some of the garages, um, individual garages, and the clubhouse. Uh, one more, please. And the townhouses, they have a little bit of design that, that these are, these are, I won't call them preliminary design, but they're, they're, um, they're not 100% tweaked. They're, we're not 100% happy, but for the purposes of where we are, you, you get the idea. One more. I think that might be just another close-up version of how they look on the back. So you wouldn't know that that's the same building. And that's our goal. Lots and lots and lots of light is, is our goal. Um, everybody has outdoor space as well as bright indoor space. And that was the goal. Next slide, please. I don't know if you can hear it, but my neighbor is getting kind of loud with music. I can move if, it, if need be. Here's just a bit of an overview. Um, um, a drone shot uh, look at, at what they would look like. Uh, you can see the walking paths uh, around. Um, there's a bit of an elevation in this property, and so um, that's what's allowed us to to, to elevate um, um, to to make the walk out. Um, I think that's the end of the slides. Good. I'll go back to mute so you can't hear this, but I'm open for questions. I suppose is that what we do next, uh, Myron? Sorry there, take myself off of mute. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, at this point, that's that's fair. Um, I, I, is there anyone uh, that would like to ask any questions at, at this point of, uh, of of Rob Thompson or, or his team? Either if you would uh, be interested in raising your hand on, on video where we can see, or there's a little icon at the top of the screen that looks like a little hand. You could click that if you to ask any questions. Is that uh, Karen interested in asking a question or somebody yeah. from... Your team. Hi, Myron. Uh, I have a question. Um, the only way we found out about this meeting was our, our neighbor, Nancy Lewis, sent us an email. If not, uh, I'm sitting here with three neighbors that know nothing about it. So I'm just curious as to how that happened. Yo, that's that's a good question. Is that Mark or is that Brent? Um, it's Mark. OK, yeah, Mark. Um, yeah, we, we, I've confirmed with the uh, with the newspaper agencies. We we sent out our circulation, uh, and and we were assured that uh, the the papers were sent out to a, a, a better than ninety eight percent market coverage area. Uh, so you know, I'm sitting here with three people, myself included, and not one of us got it, other than through our neighbor Nancy. And we border on the town. Oh, border on the yeah, property. We're like the next door neighbors kind of thing. So. You know, I just—it's it, a concern. Uh, you know, I, I very much understand what you're saying. Um, I, you know, it, it is certainly possible. I mean, with a, with a 98 uh, percent plus market coverage area, the 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 newspapers have acknowledged that it is possible that certain individuals may not receive a paper. A uh, couple of the couple of the reasons for that may be if an individual has a mailbox and they have a sign posted on their mailbox indicating no flyers or no mail or something to that effect that could prevent 
uh, a particular paper from being delivered. Uh, another reason that was suggested was that um, if, if a, a former resident of the property, uh, let's say if, if for example, if, if, if yourself or a neighbor had been living in their property for, um, you know, five years, let's say, and, and a, a previous uh, resident had lived there before that and had either called in or emailed in uh, to the papers requesting that um, that they be removed from the list or they may have had a no flyer sticker of some sort uh, in any event um, you know I, I, I the the intention was certainly to cast a, a broad net and and we were uh, certainly under the impression that we would be having a 98 percent or better uh, coverage market coverage area across uh, both of Augusta and and Prescott. I mean, uh, you know, from the pictures, they look, uh, the project looks beautiful. Uh, having said that, at least you could have touched base with the immediate neighbors. I guess that's my point. Uh, it would have been a very simple, Which is um, probably ten neighbors, rather than think about a newspaper that may or may not get there. That's that's my only point. No, I'm, I'm glad you raised the point. You know, it's it's uh, something that uh, I think municipalities in general are, uh, are are challenged with. And now that we're moving more into the digital age, uh, you know, we may end up getting to a point where uh, municipalities end up having you know everyone living in a in a community. They have everyone's email address on file and, and everyone's uh, cell phone number on file. And and when things come up, there's an opportunity to you know send a direct text message as as some agencies are, are able to do. Uh, the the Ontario Regulation 54506 provides municipalities with an option uh, to to either notify which, what you might call a, a, a conventional route of um, you know doing doing the mail out option uh, and sending that way and posting a sign on the property. It alternately it provides the option for municipalities to go the the newspaper uh, article option. Um, we, we believe this, that there's value in communicating a project of this scale to uh, to a wider audience. Uh, and um, we believe that, uh, that that there could be a lot of interest in similar kinds of projects. Well, but uh, bigger is better for sure. Yes. But, you know, like just, just to remind you, back in March, I think, uh, I guess the township did post something by the mailbox that there was going to be a public meeting. And then I guess that was cancelled at one time. But, you know, that, that would have been perfect. There was, uh, there was Mark, uh, a public meeting that had that had been scheduled back in December or so of last year, and that meeting ended up being cancelled for yeah. a, a variety of reasons. I, I think the applicants yeah. wanted more time to to pull the the process together. Now, what I what I would mention to you is that on on other types of applications where we have gone that more conventional route of of sending out the mail outs, uh, it's it's quite common for a number of envelopes to get returned. Um, you know, I. Yeah, I recall in one recent mailing there were more than six envelopes that either weren't picked up or you know that the people had moved and hadn't changed their ad their their mailing address or the email forwarding wasn't going where it should be so it, it is it, we could say that uh that that there's no such thing as a perfect notification system uh, even with the mailing uh, i mean if we were to look at it on a percentage standpoint i i, I think that you know it, it may it may be said that going the mailing route May result in actually a higher number of of letters not reaching their their intended audience uh, in in some cases. So, okay. anyways, I just wanted to bring right. it up. Uh, it's not a matter of going back and forth. It's just a matter of maybe moving forward. Uh, I guess that uh, well, we can all get better at it. Uh, thank you very much for for your comments, uh, Mark. You know, we'll we'll certainly take that into consideration. Uh, I, I raised that question with the uh, with the newspapers. Uh, and they had said that one of the things they're going to do is to undertake a um, an audit, uh, something like a phone audit, where where they would call around or send some sort of flyer around, perhaps to to different to the different houses across uh, Augusta and Prescott, uh, so that hopefully we'll be able to uh, have an even better uh, delivery rate and response rate on on future mailouts. They're going to do a a call around and just kind of check in with people it'll help deal with those situations or maybe people maybe a previous resident had asked to be removed from a list and, and maybe the new residents would like to be on that list for uh for mail outs um uh, i hear what you're saying but just moving forward i think uh, it can get better how's that yeah good so and uh myron if i can jump in can we uh can we go back to screen so we could see people 
Do you want me to put them on video? No, it's fine. Yeah, we could, uh, I, now I have I have my video turned on, but each each of the folks in the audience have, have their option to, to turn video on it. If if members of the audience would like to turn their video on, there's a little oh. cam camera icon up toward no, the top. Sorry, what I'm asking about um, is I'll I see um, I see our logo on the on the screen now. Myron, I think what uh, Rob's asking is if you stop sharing your screen, that everybody's uh, uh, video feeds would pop there up. There we go. Yeah. There we go. Perfect. Okay. Thank you very much. Sorry about that. Again, I the appreciate yeah, yeah. these pieces. The this, uh, something. No worries. And, and was it, I'm sorry, was it Brent that made the comment? So, uh, Mark. 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 Uh, Mark. Mark. Okay, I'm sorry. So, so, Mark, I'd like to apologize for not coming and, and chatting uh, with everybody. Under normal circumstances, we would have. Um, and I try and talk to all the neighbours in advance. And we had sort of put this project on hold uh, due to COVID. And then what had happened uh, in July, we realised that we could probably get it done this fall. And and with the kids in that building and, and et cetera, we wanted to get it moving along. And so... Um, uh, then the town was good enough to say, well, we have a slot for you in August and my schedule just didn't allow to do it. So I apologize for that because normally I wouldn't. Okay, thank you. That's on me. Uh, any questions about the, uh, uh, that I can address? I think we should address Bob's letter. Uh, but before that, uh, is there any other uh, questions that anybody has specifically about it yes rob it's brent ward so um my mother's okay. uh, immediately west adjacent to the property and i have a couple questions yes. and concerns uh one question i have is why is the driveway in being relocated and uh it it, it now is going to be very close to her house which is a bit of concern and directly uh, across be... from mark and karen right um so the reason it's going to be there is uh, one of the reasons is because the sight lines are better. Uh, there's a knoll that comes off uh, when you're coming out of Prescott and there's a hedge there and we felt that people wouldn't be able to see. Uh, so that was the initial thought. And then when we spoke with the counties and somebody can jump in and correct me if I'm wrong, but they like it. They like the driveways to be lined up. I think it was. Is that right, Bill or uh, Tess? or Myron, I forget who would, might know that one. Yeah, in our discussions with the county, the, they did uh, they did request that either the driveways be completely offset from each other or lined up with each other, uh, that they not be slightly offset from each other. So I guess okay. that's saying the original driveway that's there shouldn't have been there. Sorry, the original what? The existing driveway that's there and it's been there for as long as I can remember shouldn't have been really there is, is what you're saying uh, from a sight line perspective. Correct. The and and that driveway has been there a long time and they didn't really worry about sight lines then and perhaps that hedge wasn't there either. Yeah. My my second question Rob is about the uh, the excavation the the grading of the property. Um, yes. Since we've sold the property immediately north of us, uh, which was a farm my father owned, they've torn down all the buildings and we've had a little bit of a water problem. Uh, we we hadn't had a water, I shouldn't, shouldn't say we, my mother had a bit of a water problem. And then in the last couple of years, there was some additional water uh, that, that that seemed to be coming off that your property. Um, through no fault of your own, obviously. So I'm just wondering how the grading is going to be changed in that uh, I'm concerned about any further impact to her and her house. Absolutely. Um, Bill, can you deal with that? Yeah, sure, absolutely, no problem at all. Um, so the storm water would be handled through both a minor and a major storm system, um, with the minor storm system being an underground pipe system. Mm -hmm. uh, which will discharge into an existing ditch on the east side. Um, those flows will be controlled to the current five-year discharge rate uh, off of the site. 
the major flows, which are the flows that are in excess of the five year, um, are routed over land to a proposed uh, underground storage facility that will take the peak off of the discharge and allow the water to be uh, restricted in its discharge rates um, down to pre-development rates again. Uh, the water would then just be released to that same creek uh, ditch, I should say, uh, over a longer period of time uh, to allow for the uh, pre-development and post-development discharge rates on the site to be maintained. So I, I but, but I think what he's asking even more specifically is to the west side. We there's when I guess I, I don't know if it was when the buildings came down or what really caused it. And we've had talks about this before, um, but uh, water seemed to come off of our site and into his mother's yard and ultimately uh, down uh, into her basement. So what are we doing specifically on the western side to um, prevent that? Right, on the western side of the site, my apologies, I didn't realize that's where uh, the property was uh, in question that we were talking about. Uh, the western side, uh, we are going to, there's an existing uh, ditch swale that runs along there. Uh, we're going to improve that swale uh, to better handle it hydraulically uh, and more cleanly in order to direct the water um, to the discharge point. So it'll be collected within a swale and then discharged uh, to the south, I believe it is. I, I would think too that having the having the driveway there is going to be a natural barrier uh, uh, for any water that's going to go that direction. Is that right? The driveway is raised slightly. So yes, that's correct. So water would, would be shedding off the center of the driveway to both sides and the driveway is raised slightly above the existing ground. So can I ask you a question then? We, we live directly across from that driveway. So that water is going to come on our driveway. And I dealt with the township on this before, uh, where we had a lot of runoff that was causing damage to the property. And that's why they put a, a small curb out in front of the property when we originally built uh, two years ago. Um, and now if you're telling me it's raised, that small runoff is not gonna work. No, the, the just the driveway is raised. Um, that's what so I'm saying. So your driveway is gonna be higher than our driveway. The driveway is going to be higher than the existing land, but it is going to tie into the existing county road too. Right. So the elevation of the road in front of your house will not be changing. But if the driveway is higher than what was there, then this was a problem before. And uh, Leeds Grenville was very kind to uh, build a curb in front of our property right. and alleviated that, that problem. Having said that, if, if your laneway is now going to be higher, the, the natural flow of water has to come across Highway 2 and there's it's going to come on our property and cause damage. Again. The, the, flow, from the, Sorry, the flow from the driveway uh, is shed off to the landscaped areas uh, on the uh, subject property site. Um, it is then collected in the roadside ditch and enters a culvert uh, at uh, County Road 2. Now, I know where the culvert is, Yeah, but, it, but that's not my point. My point is if you're laying is higher than the property that is going to cause that water runoff that's my point the the water sheds to the uh to the natural landscaping on the property not directly to county road two in other words the water is not going to run down our driveway across highway two which is crowned and onto your land that's not going to happen is what he's saying okay it, it sheds to the sides of the driveway not to, it does happen it, it, I beg your pardon? I guess my, my concern is if it does happen. Well, if it does, like then the, we would have to modify it. But I, I think Grindle that's a valid concern. Because Leeds Grendel was very don't uh, want nice. it to be like Build a ski server. slope coming flying down there and right at the top of the end of yours. But, but um, you know, the proper engineering procedures would never let that happen. So I, I think it's a valid concern, but I don't think that. I, I don't think that's going to be a scenario here. I, I just want to bring it bring it up, Rob, in case it is an issue. I I understand. I it's valid. I, I hear what you're saying, but um, yeah, sure. to and, jump uh, in for one we'll second there, if I can. Uh, maybe to jump in for one second, the one thing to keep in mind with this development here is that all of the stormwater that is collected on site and even with increased roof areas and, and uh, road areas and stuff like that, the entire intention behind the engineering is to deal with it on site. 
and and improve it so that that water drainage doesn't go off to the neighboring properties, um, which is what the the underground storage systems and the and the drainage flows are engineered towards. So everything goes down to the roadside ditch, and is let out at a rate that um, that mitigates the 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 impact of that water going to the ditch as well too. And that's the entire point of the stormwater management for this site. No, I fully understand that. I just want to That's valid. That's valid. We'll make sure it doesn't happen. We'll make sure it doesn't happen. Yeah. Somebody vacuuming? <laughs> I'm, I'm Karen, I'm, I'm going to put the audio on, on your side on mute there just for a minute. If, or uh, somebody else uh, is, is getting uh, the loud audio there. Uh, maybe getting a feedback situation here. Uh, I'm going to try to mute uh, Ray. I may mute. Uh, nope. Okay. L it looks like the audio situation has been worked out there. I'm not sure. It may have been on Rob's side. I'm not sure. Uh, but everybody else, I believe, is uh, muted at, at the moment. So. Uh, we'll just let's let's work together here as you know the questions here uh, are continue to be raised. Uh, I, I would mention here uh, at this point, Mark, that uh, certainly concerns been noted. Um, the rezoning is the the rezoning, the actual the, the the more specific details of the how the site is designed and how the site is ultimate site is ultimately planned and where exactly your know, water will run off and, and how and, and these types of more detailed engineering solutions will would be addressed at the next stage uh, of the uh, development and planning process, which is called the site plan control application stage. Uh, and so uh, South Nation uh, Conservation really is the, the group with the 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 expertise, uh, the engineering and, and the water side of things that we would be circulating uh, to and likewise to the United Counties of Leeds Grenville uh, it's been no, they're supportive of the entrance moving, but as we go forward, we're going to continue working with them uh, and, and looking to them for the guidance and their expertise. We'll raise it with them that a concern has been raised by uh, neighbors directly uh, across the street uh, and uh, that, that would like to to have that input be be at least uh, in, informing that that next phase of, of the development. Hopefully that uh, hopefully that'll help answer your question and concern there as well. Absolutely. One of our concerns as the neighbors, and I'm sure you've done a traffic study, is that you're going to have one exit out onto number two. And there's so many times that we have so much difficulty getting out on number two highway, especially if people are backing up um, out onto the highway. So that's a concern of ours as to the increase of traffic. Plus, if there's ever any fires or uh, anything going on emergency wise in the units. Well, what we're wondering, Myron, is basically it, it's an entrance and an exit. So, you know, I, again, I, I think the, from what I look at the property, I, I think it looks uh, it, pretty nice. Mm -hmm. I, I love the design. Having said that, I, I'd like to have like less traffic coming out and at least an option for people to go on to uh, one of the side streets because I understand you're going to tie into the water and the gas and the sewage from Prescott. So with that, surely to God, you can work out a deal where you can have an entrance exit there to alleviate more traffic on Highway 2. And then if, God forbid, there was ever a fire um, or a, a, an emergency situation, you had two opportunities to get into the property rather than just one right now. You know, that, that's a fair point. Uh, I, I think that the property is quite large. It's about a four acre property. I, I think that there is uh, ample space on the on the property if anyone were to need to leave their residence for for any particular reason uh, the, there has there has certainly been discussion we've been in uh, the the township and the the applicants have been in discussion with the United counties and uh, we we've been regularly uh, you know corresponding with uh, the town of Prescott uh, having direct access road access into the town of Prescott complicates things from uh, uh, a, a tax administrative and, and other uh, types of reasons. Now, with respect to the traffic specifically, I know what you're saying that, uh, you know, the, the 
could be a number of new people and what will that mean for the traffic? Uh, there, there had been, you know, if you want to call it multi, multi dwelling, multi structure uses on, on the property previously. And the traffic analysis that has been done, uh, you know, if we were to look at just a regular standard market without the con any consideration of the target market that the applicant is is looking for uh, and will be marketing to that being uh, likely primarily widows 60 plus which have quite a dispersed uh, traffic pattern uh, <laughs> if, 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 uh, based on the you know from an engineering standpoint right we're, what we're saying I, is I'm, that, I'm 60 years old so. <laughs> no, no, and what we're saying is that there aren't there aren't there aren't, there aren't individuals that are all getting up at you know seven o'clock, leaving the house at uh, you know seven thirty to be at work by eight type of thing. And so, what that means is that you know one will go to the store at this time, one will go to the appointment at this time. The the traffic pattern is is more dispersed. And so, from an engineering analysis standpoint, I I, I might let Bill uh, jump in at this point to to speak to more of those specifics relate as as he was involved in the in the traffic. Stuff. <laughs> He's smiling in the background there, so. <laughs> uh, yeah, we, we did a, we did, uh, a traffic study was completed uh, approximately four years ago on the, on the property site. Um, and we updated the uh, anticipated flows from this site coming, uh, traffic flows from this site coming off onto Highway 2, uh, County Road 2, sorry. Um, Basically, with this type of development, if it was um, a standard development with a with no target market, we would anticipate to see a peak AM um, flow off of the site of approximately 12 cars per hour during the peak time. Uh, so roughly, we're looking at about one vehicle every five minutes on average, uh, turning on the County Road Two, uh, and that's not expected to make any kind of in uh, any kind of significant or impact to the traffic on Highway 2. But you know, you, you said it was done four or five years ago, yeah, which, which, is, which is fair, but um, I guess, you know, other things have happened since this, I understand some project called Aqua World might happen, um, which is going to put more stress on Highway 2. So, you know, it, it just and, keeps and, going on. Right, and, and I would agree, but uh, and, and towns do continue to develop uh, and um, you know, I, and when Aqua World, if Aqua World decides to go ahead, then they would have to show how uh, how theirs would impact the traffic in the in the town as well. I, I just think we, we really need to get a secondary uh, yeah. entrance and exit. Uh, that's uh, so, Rob. I love the project. I think it looks great. It, it'll it'll uh, take away the eyesore. We'll say yes. Mm -hmm. uh, but we need a secondary road. I hear so what you're saying. How Sorry, did you ahead. come out with the 60 plus uh, demographic for your for your townhouses? townhouses? So these these buildings are our 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 business model essentially is based on the recognition of uh, a hole in the market, and the hole in the market right now is people who are generally north of 55 and more likely our experiences in other projects uh, north of 60 years old for singles and north of 74 couples are selling their homes and they're looking to uh, rent something but they don't want to rent something and they don't mind downsizing but they don't want to um, have something less uh, than what they normally have. And so because as a, as a development community, we really haven't built purpose-built uh, or developed purpose-built apartments for 40 years. And we're just starting over the last couple of years to get into that. So they're, they're, although these people no longer want home ownership, uh, they're not, there's nothing for them to build. Or, or sorry, there's nothing, there's nothing for them to rent. And so our goal is to provide uh, provide that gap. And so these will be pretty high end. Um, we're not looking at them at the, from the point of view of, oh, the old style of, oh, we're going to rent them. So we're going to put cheap stuff in. These are going to be beautiful, beautiful apartments, and they're going to be um, at the high end of the market for sure. So 
that will, and they're going to be designed with those people in mind. So those people don't need three bedrooms, so there won't be. Um, they won't have basements because there's going to be somebody in there, but in, in that basement of that of that property or uh, below them. Um, so uh, two bedrooms or uh, lower ones are one plus, and um, uh, that appeals to a certain demographic. And we, um, and what we found is it's single women, not necessarily widows, but that is one of the, that, that ironically, that is one of our, uh, the, um, the groups uh, that we've identified. That, and this is based on, um, I really got the idea uh, that property that I showed in the presentation uh, behind Canadian Tire, it was, um, we couldn't sell those condos. So we rented most of them and then sold them to investors. And most of them were uh, rented by single women that were older than 60 years old. And there was some in their, in their 70s, but they were generally couples. And so uh, we're filling that market segment. And it's going to be pricey enough that somebody's not who's just starting up is probably not going to afford it. So that's why we think that that demographic is and that location is is the right um, the right combination. Okay. So as a result, the five five car or one car every five minutes is going to be much less than that. So your comment about we need a second egress, I completely disagree. And Prescott disagrees. Um, the engineering disagrees and the um, the um, the county disagrees. So it's valid what you're saying. I hear what you're saying. I don't I, I don't agree. I'm sorry. And, so, and we've gone through the process at this point. So, Rob, so you're you're aiming at the 60 plus and let's say it's not all rented. So the 30s are coming in, the, the 30 years old are coming in. Your clubhouse is going to be kind of like in our front yard. Is that going to become like the party house? Is that going to be the party house? It, like it, <laughs> you know, um, I, I'm putting a lot of money into this project and most of it's not mine. So I'm borrowing a lot of it. So I'm on the hook. I've done my research. I'm not new to this game. I know that that is a huge market segment. The lot, and I'm plan to own this. I don't plan to sell it. Life could change, but my plan is to own it. So, um, I I'm building it specifically for a long term hold. I'm building it specifically for a certain demographic because I have zero interest in being a landlord for thirty somethings. No offense, um, but uh, it, this is built for for uh, an adult style community. Um, people my age and older. So what uh, is in the clubhouse? Beg your pardon? What is in the clubhouse? Um, a little uh, a kitchenette, really, a place to play cards or to gather with family, a place to sit on and watch uh, and, you know, socialize. Um, what we found is, um, are you familiar with, there's one in uh, the old Maitland School site? Um, and they, um, forget his name. What's his name? Who did that? Same guy who did Apple Blossom? Donahue or Donovan? Oh, uh, Peter Donnelly. Peter Donnelly. Peter Donnelly. So, uh, Peter built some townhouses and he built, um, and he built a clubhouse. And I thought, wow, would people actually use that? And he, he built some there and then he built some around the corner and over into Apple Blossom and they're all rentals and they can all use it. And one of our staff actually lives in, um, in one of them. Um, he's a retired, semi-retired guy and he's a great putterer and fixer of things, handy guy. And, uh, and he says that they use it all the time. So we decided to incorporate it in this. I assure you it will not become a party house. Okay. I'll hold not you to say to that. that seniors can't <laughs> party. If we may, uh, if if it's all right, uh, Karen, we've got uh, we've had uh, Bob Myers has had a hand raised here for uh, a little bit, and there's a, a question in the chat here, so we can bounce back to you. Uh, but we've got um, uh, Nancy is asked, "What will we see from County Road Two, Rob? Uh, is it the garages or the exposed basement side of the buildings?" 
Um, if, if you'd like me to bounce back to the PowerPoint, I could do that, but. Um, you could just scroll up that one and that'll be pretty. Uh, it's, it's the two story that you're going to see uh, from County Road 2. Yeah, it makes those spaces. Yeah. So Rob, I have a, a couple of comments. I know in my presentation that you're going to look at and address later, you're probably going to address yeah, some okay. of them, but uh, if I could speak just quickly to your comment about retirees, yeah. uh, we don't know what you're going to do with this project. You're going to rent to whomever you can rent to. It's not going to be, uh, you can't discriminate that way. And, and you know, whoever you rent to is fine, but I, I'm drawing it back to, you know, if you rent to 30 somethings or 20 somethings or whatever, whatever the market can do, if the retirees don't come, you're going to rent them to whoever can rent it. It's not specifically exclusively for retirees. And that gets back to the traffic question. Uh, when you look at the traffic, there will be more traffic impact. If you build this project and sell this project a year, two years, three years from now, your retiree concept could disappear. So everything that you're basing this on for retirees, that could change at any time. So I disagree with you on that uh, in terms of the traffic study. And I get back to, I really think there should be an entrance off of Dibble or Henry. Uh, if it's extra cost to the builder or the township, then so be it. For a safety standpoint, for access to it, uh, for the people living there, for walking along the highway, very difficult to walk on the highway to get to that project. You don't have to. You got to, you got to have an access point. And if the town of Prescott's not working with you, then I suggest you guys get your heads together and work something. Yeah. Um, so uh, they will. They, they will be able to walk along. Walk along Gibble. There'll be access. Uh, and and uh, Henry. Um, they don't have. They can use that system, but. The town of Prescott doesn't want us to access uh, those streets, and it is, as Myron said, it's fairly, it's a fairly complex situation because we're crossing borders. But let me let, let's forget about that for one minute. Um, we're still even. Let, let's say you're right, which you're not, by the way. But okay, fair enough. Um, I, I hear what you're saying, but but the, we're building this for long term. And there, I'm the last year of the baby boomers, and, and uh, so we probably got a a sight line of 30 years here, uh, where this is going to be that type of project because it's going to be designed specifically for the senior market. So I really believe it it won't be it won't change anytime soon. But let's say it does. We're still only one car per five minutes, is what the science tells us. Uh, that's not astronomical. And, um, and and I don't see how it would impact. And the fact, I think we're only having this conversation because my east lot line um, has two stubs into it. And when we first looked at it, we thought, well, maybe that makes a, maybe that makes a lot of sense to do it. But um, but what you're asking now is instead of us to out outload. Uh, 20 units onto a county road, which is where the traffic is designed for that. You're asking us to put it onto a city street, which is not planned for it. And I, I, I hear what you're saying, but if I was one property over, if I was on the ward farm or on the ward property, we wouldn't be having this discussion because it's not an option. And and every other uh, project, they they only have one access. So I don't buy the idea that that uh, it's a safety issue that, you know, we, we have to have an extra egress from the, you know, we're not dealing with a basement apartment where we need a secondary egress. It, it's a four acre property. If, if the, you know, if we have a fire, people can get away from it. So you arrange to get the sanitary stewards, the water, et cetera, from the town of Prescott. You made an arrangement with them on that, but they're telling you're telling me they won't play well with you on having access. So and does it well, does it not make your site more uh, more valuable, more sellable if you do have that access? Uh, I, 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 I frankly, I don't think so. I don't see what the difference is. And, and again, we're talking one car per five minutes. I don't see how that's going to impact it. 
you know, I'm, I'm not putting 200 units here and I could see that's a completely different story, but we're only, we're only, it's only 20 units. And generally it's going to be one car families uh, to start. So, you know, and, and, you know, I guess the, the, uh, the, um, the elephant in the room too is one of the major reasons is this is one of the major reasons Augusta wants to do this is because the tax base has has changed a bit. You know, the, with the they're looking more for residential uh, tax base, and that helps everybody if the tax base goes up because the with the um, the industrial base has gone down. So we might be able to strike a deal with Prescott. And frankly, I'm putting a, I'm putting a walkway pretty close to to um, Henry Street. So from my perspective, I don't know that it, it, it's not going to cost me crazy money more. So that's not the reason. But what I can tell you is Prescott will want uh, a good chunk of the taxes, and rightly so, if we're dumping out onto their road, because now they've got uh, costs and wear and tear uh, on theirs. And how many people, if, let's pretend you guys didn't live on County Road 2. Let's pretend you lived on Henry Street or Dibble Street. Now all of a sudden, it's like, well, why should we take that traffic? They've got a county road there, so they can have the equal and opposite. So, um, I think, in all fairness, it's in Augusta. We're finally getting Augusta uh, residential uh, going. We're coming out onto a road that was built for traffic. We're only putting in one car per five uh, per five minutes. I, I don't see. I, I I don't see your argument. I'm sorry. Big, and, and big, maybe, big, big. Begs the question, uh, why doesn't Prescott just annex it and take it over? Well, I don't know, but that's a whole lot. That's not for, <laughs> I don't know. I think, I think that's a conversation for another meeting. Um, so yeah. uh, <laughs> that's uh, what I'm trying to say. We've, uh, we've, we've had some really good dialogue here. Um, you know, quite a number of, uh, quite a number of comments raised and, uh, and we've had, uh, we've had opportunities for, for Rob and Tyler and, and Tess and Bill to, uh, to be able to provide, uh, you know, answers to to a number of the questions, um, a number of the points that had been raised uh, really address uh, the kinds of things that I would have highlighted in the in the township comments uh, section. The things I might just uh, highlight here are that there have been quite a number of site reports provided, everything from planning justification, uh, initial planning re justification report, and update, uh, stormwater and servicing reports, uh, an initial traffic study, and then an, an updated. Uh, traffic analysis, uh, grading plan, sediment and erosion plan, and also archaeological testing reports. Uh, all of those together combined, uh, you know, demonstrate preparation on the part of the applicant and uh, feasibility for the for the project to proceed uh, from a from a planning and, and design standpoint. So I, I think at this point we'll we'll go into the next section of the the meeting. Uh, where we'll give folks an opportunity that wish to to speak in favor of the project, um, have an opportunity to do that, and uh, after we we go through whoever would like to speak in favor, uh, we'll we'll give an opportunity for anybody that would formally like to uh, be be listed as, as someone that's uh, that's that's against the uh, the, yeah. the the rezoning portion of it proceeding. So Myron, could, we're going to go to Rob. Should we talk first. about Bob's? Uh, Bob's letter first. Yeah, can we address that, please? Yeah, I mean, if, if folks are amenable to that, let's let's do that first. Now, uh, we received a letter here, uh, kind of a two-page, two-pager of a letter um, from from Good Bob. Letter, now, Bob. Now, yeah, well absolutely, thought. right. Not very well thought out. Uh, you know, a number of uh, different topics covered, ranging from stormwater drainage to sanitary sewer. Uh, County Road 2 entrance, which we've actually had quite a bit of discussion about already, uh, and then a number of, uh, of recommendations. Now, in the, the the responses I provided to you, Bob, or, or do you still feel there's a, from your perspective, do you feel there's still a requirement to go through every single point uh, on in, in the letter, or uh, some of them, I believe, are, have, have been addressed, for example, uh, recommending that speed limits be reduced, that's already been looked after. So to raise that in the meeting, I don't know if that would necessarily be valuable to, to the group. I, well, to I, don't, I don't think you advised the group that speed limits are being amended. You advised me, but not the group. 
I, I'm simply just asking from your perspective, though, do you feel very strongly that every single one of the privacy rules should be addressed? I think we need to go through them. Absolutely. Okay, well, here, so let's, uh, I'll, I'll, maybe I'll just read it for the benefit of the group, and or, then we'll... Yeah, then we'll, I was uh, going to say, do you want, Bob, do you just want to take them point by point since they're yours? Is that we can. Saying? You didn't put them on a PowerPoint, uh, Myron? Well, they're, uh, they're not on a PowerPoint, um, but I wonder if there's an easy way to put them up on the screen for everybody. Uh, I'm, I don't, I'm not sharing my screen at the moment, so I'm going to jump into my email here and see if there might be an easier way to uh, to put these into. Uh, Rob, you have them there. Uh, uh, I'm technologically challenged, but uh, but it, essentially, if I've I've read it. I'm I'm pretty familiar with them. If here, I think I, 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 I give this a whirl here, folks. I'm going to share my screen. If I can ask, uh, maybe if I could ask uh, everybody just to hang on here. We'll try to share the content. And I should share the full screen here. And are we coming up? Do we see an email there? Yeah. All right, so uh, Bob, uh, first point here is stormwater. Maybe I'm not sure if there's a way to zoom that in. So I think zoom there. Uh, first one there, stormwater drainage, environmental concerns. So, um, you know, I think we dealt with that. Uh, did you get your that question answered, Bob? When, so uh, I guess my, my question is, Rob, the storage tanks, are they going to be large enough to handle a catastrophic event, uh, large rain, precipitation, that type of thing? Bill, do you want to answer that? Yeah, sure, no problem. Um, so the the stormwater storage tanks that are being provided on site are sized to handle a, um, a rainfall event that has a 1% chance of occurrence in any given year or a 100-year event uh, that takes place. Uh, and that's in line with uh, uh, the Ministry of the Environment's guidelines for site development. Okay. So the second point on the sediment for cleaning out the tanks, who's responsible for that? Who will do it and who will monitor it? Bill? Um, I, sorry, I wasn't sure who was uh, responding. My apologies. Uh, generally speaking, the sediment tank is um, any sediment that's required to be cleaned out of the tanks is the responsibility of the owner of the of the land. Uh, so Rob would ultimately be responsible to ensure that it is um, cleaned out on a, it's at least inspected and cleaned out on a regular basis if required. Who will um, monitor that? And and Tess, I'm just gonna I'm gonna uh, kind of deflect you a little bit here. Um, if I'm not mistaken that uh, the stormwater mo or the sediment monitoring with the tanks would become part of the site plan control agreement, would it not? Yes, and Myron could also speak to that, but those types of items that we would see through the site plan control application, any specific items for this property could be included in the site plan agreement with, with the owner, between the owner and the township. So we would, we would want to, as neighbours, be ensured that someone in the municipality just like the town of Prescott gets in the the trucks that clean out sediment, et cetera. You see these in municipalities all the time. Is Augusta going to take on that responsibility? Who's going to be responsible for that? Uh, you know, if we change owners, if something happens to the property, you know, who, who's going to monitor this and ensure that there isn't an event where we have a catastrophic rain event, those tanks are full and all of a sudden the sediment's flowing down in front of our waterfront and into the town town's waterfront, into the town's water plant, all those things. Right. Uh, and like I said, it's generally the landowner that's responsible for it. It's generally included within site plan agreements with the town, uh, which makes it enforceable by the municipality uh, to ensure that the work is, uh, the tanks are inspected and carried out, um, uh, and, and a cleaning is carried out if required. Um, yeah. there, there's literally tens of thousands of these types of systems uh, across uh, Ontario. Um, and uh, so this is a, something that's an ongoing um, thing where vac trucks do come in they do clean them out um, they just so, have to be um, Bob, i would i would propose that the municipality set some sort of a guideline or rule for this it it won't be the um it won't be the municipality uh and the south the, nations the, conservation authority then yeah can can 
my experience is um, we have a similar system. Uh, it's actually oil grid uh, uh, grit separator on a property that we manage. And we've contracted with a, with a pumping company and they have it on a regular maintenance. So it, it, it's not up to, oh, gee, I wonder if I should check that once in a while. It, it, it's automatic. It happens. And as, um, as um, Bill said, there's hundreds and thousands of these everywhere. It, it, it's a standard procedure. Well, I, I would recommend that council put in some sort of a monitoring system. So do, would you suggest that it would be it would suffice that we have to have a qualified uh, company uh, have a contract with a qualified company? Because yeah. quite frankly, all due respect to the township, they don't have the expertise to know who, what that is. They're just going to hire the same company I would hire. OK, so as, lo as long as there's a system in place, that's my concern. I, I, I agree, Bob, and and it will be 100%. Okay. I agree. So getting on to this, this thanks, Rob. Uh, getting on to the sanitary sewers, what happens if there's a uh, power shutdown, ice storm, whatever, uh, and you have a number of days in there or seven hours, 12 hours, two days, whatever, where the pumping system doesn't work, the lift system, your grinders, all that stuff, what happens to the affluent? We're going to have a... Um, a, um, a backup generator system uh, as part of that. And right now we just don't know what size we're going to, once we have, once we've established what systems we're actually gonna have in the building, um, we figure that if we're going to pay for an automatic generator system to come on, we wanna uh, decide what systems, buy a big enough one that it will cover certain systems in the, um, in the building as well. So for instance, uh, you know, if we have another ice storm and we're out for a week, then it will not only handle the the, um, the sewage, it'll also keep the heat going and some lights. So my, okay, thanks. So my, back, my second generator. My second part of that question, do the sewers overflow into the stormwater drainage system? Bill, I don't know. No, the sewers do not overflow into the stormwater drainage system. There's no combined sewer systems on this site. Big begs the question if the if the stormwater sewers you're getting the sanitary system from the town of Prescott, then why don't you run the sanitary sewers through the town of Prescott all or sorry, the, the stormwater sewers through the south town of Prescott like you do the sanitary? Because you're really increasing the water that's going to come through this site with all the blacktop and roofs and everything. You're going to have a hell of a lot more water, excuse my language, you're going to have a lot more water coming through the ditch out front into the river. Why doesn't the storm water get routed through Prescott also and deal with through their system? Bill, that's a good question. Um, so uh, there is no agreement in place for Prescott to. Uh, accept any stormwater flow, at least that I'm, I'm aware of. But correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Rob. Um, no, so there is. Yeah, currently. Should, should it be addressed? Uh, currently, the stormwater uh, flows off of the site, uh, flow to the south and towards the St. Lawrence River. But there's uh, a natural filtration system there, which is going to be bypassed with all this blacktop. You're not going to have that anymore. Yep, there's going to be a lot of water flowing now through the system that wasn't flowing before. That's correct. And, and the peak discharge rate from that water uh, will be reduced to pre-development flow rates. Uh, we are also proposing an OGS um, system for this site as well after it leaves the tanks for clarification. I'm not an engineer. What's an OGS? The OGS is an oil grit separator or uh, okay. they also go by uh, hydrodynamic separators as well. Um, so has anybody investigated with the town of Prescott that, that or is the municipality willing to investigate with the town of Prescott to have the stormwater go through the town? I don't believe anybody's looked into it uh, specifically. Um, just as uh, just as the sanitary sewer goes, I believe it would also require it to be pumped in order to That's get fine. up in. Up in you're you're push, pushing a lot of water into the river and we live on the river and we pay big taxes to live on the river along with all the people here and we don't want all this running down the front of our 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 water our beach we we paid price to live here both through the price of buying the house 
and also the taxes we pay, which are substantially more than houses on the other side of the road. Right. And the water currently flows towards your property now. The water comes right across through and out down past Mark's property and flows with the flow of the river. So Absolutely. you're pumping a lot more water through that's not naturally filtrated. Uh, no, it, it part of it will be naturally filtered. It'll be going through some of the common ditching, uh, but we will be filtering it with a hydrodynamic separator and meeting me, uh, Ministry of Environment uh, requirements. So if, uh, if I can raise a point and suggest uh, to the county people and Mayor Malenka who are on the call that perhaps we should look at talking to the town of Prescott about the storm water. Hello. I think Anybody Bob, there? We, may, we may have lost Bob's audio just trailing off at, to, toward the, the end there. We, we did catch the part about a recommendation. I, I suggested maybe we should. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah. I suggested maybe we should look at the storm water going through the town of Prescott. You're hooking up to the sanitary sewer systems. Why don't you hook up to the storm water system through Prescott? I mean, the, we can certainly have this uh, discussion. Uh, we can certainly open it up. I, I don't believe that we've ever had the town of Prescott uh, uh, you know, contacting us and, and saying that they would request all of the, the water heading in their direction. But I, I believe we're getting now into a, a, another site plan control issue. We're, we're, uh, we've got to remember that we're here primarily to, to discuss the rezoning side of the, the application. And, uh, it's a uh, public we, meeting. All right. Absolutely. It's a public yeah. meeting where we raise our concerns. That's what this is about. And you can certainly yeah, I, feel free to to raise the concerns. That's not uh, I, it's not what I'm saying at all. Just uh, just saying that uh, you know we've we've got commitment uh, been been expressed to engage to uh, engineer uh, the standards to involve the ministry of uh, appropriate ministry of the environment, South Nation Conservation, work with the United Counties as well on uh, the stormwater uh, drainage uh, and, and related considerations. OK, so I've, I've raised my point. Uh, I've requested that you review with the town of Prescott. I, I'll leave that with you guys. We'll do that, Bob. OK, so. I think I've addressed pretty well, Nancy. Anything else? No. Uh, I am happy to hear that the speed limits are being reduced to 50 kilometers an hour. And uh, thank you for your time, folks. Thanks, Dr. Bob. I thought it was really well thought out and uh, it gave me, I did a lot of thinking, particularly around your sanitary concerns. Um, and it, it, you know, although we knew that we were, or, discussed that, you know, we would be having um, um, backup generated power. It really uh, made me think about making the development better, not just for that from safety concerns, but for, as I had mentioned, for um, for the residents to, uh, to be not impacted by power outages. So I, th that was great. I appreciate your letter. Okay. Thank you. Oh. I'm... I'm done, guys. Yeah, you know, li likewise as well. Here, I as I, as I said earlier, uh, you know, uh, Bob, really appreciated uh, you taking the time uh, to to put all of your thoughts, uh, you know, put them to paper, essentially like that. Create a, you know, cre create something that'll end up being being part of the public record and and important considerations that uh, that should be can you know. Uh, should be looked at with with not just this uh, project, but with uh, with a number of different projects. And if there are opportunities out there for uh, for our municipalities to cooperate better with each other, or for us to cooperate better with uh, different uh, di different reviewing uh, agencies uh, and and other partners, we we're certainly uh, you know you know willing to uh, to do what we can to to try to make the the system development in in the township and. Um, you know, and, and this project uh, in particular, the best uh, the best it can be. Um, any other questions from from folks before we move into the more formal uh, section of uh, inviting those in attendance who wish to speak in favor or, or speak against? Uh, the, I have one more question. That would be would that be Mark? Uh, that's asking. Mark. Yeah. Do you all want right. to share your screen? 
Hello? Feel, feel free to fire away there, Mark. You're welcome. To uh, just, a, just a question on uh, trees. There's some big trees over there right now. Uh, what's happening with those? So um, I want to see what uh, condition there are. Uh, there is, I think, two of them are in the way uh, of the buildings. And um, we have a si significant setback from the road uh, because of the environmental uh, concerns and the, the setback for the um, um, for the water intake water in zone. So uh, we're. Um, I would have liked to have built something around it, in front of it, and behind it, but uh, but we can't. So two of them are planned to come down, and the others, I'm unsure. I'd like to keep them because I love trees, and Tyler, I drive try Tyler crazy. We we have a couple of bush lots right now, and um, and uh, we've been sighting houses, and I keep making them uh, leave trees until I've d discovered that. They just can't be there. So if they can be saved, uh, we'll definitely save them. I don't know. I was looking at them the other day, and they're pretty rough. Um, so, I mean, I think they're a huge advantage to have. Uh, per, but if they're going to fall on the on the property, it would be a problem. We had a problem with uh, one of the trees uh, beside Mrs. Ward's uh, house, and um, they all seem to be the same vintage. So um, if they can be saved, if not, I can tell you that we want to make this beautiful, so we're going to landscape it all uh, regardless. So you're going to plant more trees then if you have to take some down? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's, that's kind of the, uh, uh, the wish. Beg your pardon? That would be the wish, because, I mean, it is yeah, quite absolutely. nice to have beautiful old trees like that. And uh, if you absolutely. do have to take it down, it would be nice to have a replanting, uh, I'll say program, but just a replanting just for cosmetic work. Yeah. yeah, my goal is to have it, uh, make it beautiful, really, really beautiful. Um, this is a project that we're hoping will spark other projects um, for us. And so it really is a, sig a signature. Uh, so we're probably going to be putting in um, an inordinate amount of, of money in landscaping. I hope you'll be, um, uh, it, when we get the landscape plan, I'm happy to share it with you. Okay. So when is the next meeting scheduled? Is it uh, Monday? Yeah, we have. Uh, so we have a public meeting today. Uh, the, this is on deck for uh, Monday's uh, Monday nights, this coming Monday night's council meeting. Um, so that will be that'll be another virtual meeting. If if any of you uh, were interested in uh, attending that, you could you any folks could let me know right now. Either just you know, say it or type it into the chat box, uh, and uh, we'll be taking taking into account the uh, questions and and comments and concerns uh, relating to the rezoning that have been raised today, and uh, in incorporating as as required into the planning report with recommendation that'll be uh, going forward to council for Monday's meeting. Again, was that part of the the newspaper that was supposedly sent to us? Uh, advertising a council meeting? No. Yeah. No. This would be separate. Advertise that the the notice that went out was advertising the public meeting. So we wouldn't know about this meeting normally. Right. I guess that's what I'm asking. We, would, well, we wouldn't really know about this Monday. And meeting. what time does it start? There's a 6:30 p.m. start time for Augusta council meetings. It's a standard council meeting. I mean, if if you if you took an interest in fairness to the town, if you took an interest, you would know when the when the public meetings are and they post what's what's going on uh, at, at them. But nobody's hiding anything here. And I'm sorry you didn't. Again, I, I own that. I should have come and knocked on your door. Yeah, it's just not myself, Rob. It's uh, it, it seems to be everybody around us that, that didn't know anything about this. Yeah, fair and enough. I'm not blaming anybody. I'm just making a comment that it shouldn't happen. Yeah, yeah for sure. So maybe they can improve the system. Um, so the, the process from here is we go through. Uh, so this is for zoning on Monday and then the middle of of 
uh, September for site plan. Our goal is to start building this fall. If all works out. Uh, thank you so much, everyone. Uh, I'll just put a you know kind of feeling a pause in the in the conversation there. Uh, any any other questions here before we we go on to the next part of the the meeting here, where we we offer a formal opportunity for anyone wishing to to list themselves as a, uh, as a as a person being for the project and, and making comments in that regard or being against the project and, and making comments in that regard. Are we, we OK to move to that next stage? Hearing no concerns. OK, um, so we'll give, we'll give an opportunity here. We'll give an opportunity first for anybody that's, that's interested in speaking in favor of the proposal. After that, you know, we'll, we'll go on to an opportunity to provide for anyone wishing to speak uh, against uh, the proposal, but uh, Speaking in favor, is there anybody that would like to uh, to, to make a formal you know, comment or, or, or statement or, or presentation of any kind in, in favor of the proposal at this time? Uh, I will say that I'm looking forward to the development. I am adjacent south of it and uh, having the building in disarray for the last number of years and the grass and the wildlife and the kids and the broken windows and the phone calls. I'm glad to see you moving forward. I just want to make sure that um, it's all done properly and that we end up with what you have created. I promise you, uh, is, is that Karen speaking? No, that's Bonnie Stepham. I'm just, uh, Bonnie, I'm just Bonnie, Yeah, Bonnie, sorry. Um, uh, I, I promise you, if you look at any of my developments, they're, they're pristine. I'm. Tyler will tell you he's our head of construction. I'm a complete pain in the ass about detail and about beauty. Um, we really want to get it right, and it's a property. Uh, again, it's a it's it's a it's a it's a project that we want to take uh, as um, sort of a launching pad for other types of projects. We really believe that it's it's a piece that's missing in the market, and we think we know how to fill it. And um, so I promise you it'll be beautiful. And um, I'm happy to share my cell number with any of you. We could put it on screen or, or, um, or what have you. I welcome your calls at any time uh, through the process. I can give it to well, you I think we you called want. you over the kids. <laughs> yeah, that's right, you did, thank you. No, I pro probably should have made this mention just b before opening uh, things up. But if, if we could, please, uh, anybody wishing to speak, if we can have uh, you, just for the purpose of the public record, if we were ever uh, you know, asked for, for this at a future date, well, a couple of the pieces of key information that we're looking for are the, the, the spelling of, uh, of individuals first and last names, please, and also you know, their uh, municipal address. So I did hear uh, Bonnie was speaking, but Bonnie, I didn't catch your last name, and I was curious what, uh, what address you were at, please. I'm at 1690 County Road 2. I'm just south of the project, and my last name is spelled S-T-E-T-H-E-M. I have property in Augusta, but also in Prescott. So that was my concern with what was going on with Prescott. So I've addressed so, it with Prescott already, so I kind of know what their thoughts are. Thank you, Bonnie. Last name S-T-E-P-H-E-M. Did I catch that? S-T-E-T-H-E-M. T H E M. OK, there we are. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, at, at this time, any anyone else that's interested in uh, in making a, a, a comment uh, in, in support uh, in, in favor of the project? I do see a hand up there, uh, Bob. If, if that's you, you're welcome to go next. I, I think it's it's actually Nancy. Um, Nancy. I think there were some legitimate concerns raised and before we move forward and get a, a response from the people that are around here. We we need to know what it is you're going to look at, you know, given the concerns that we had. What do you mean what it is that we're going to look at? Well, I think there were some legitimate concerns raised. You said some things you're going to look at, some things you oh, disagree I... with. Um, what is it you're, you know, where is it you're going with what we raised here tonight? I understand what you're saying. So. Um... With regard to the storm sewer, um, I'll speak to Prescott directly to see if that's even an option. Um, I don't know if that's the best if that's the best route. I'm not an engineer. I can tell you that the engineer crew has um, uh, has used the MOE guidelines 
uh, which are pretty strict for super strict for development. Um, so even if we go with wh where, where we are today, you can rest assured it's, it's done to the letter of, of the guidelines. Um, where the generator, um, I don't think you're gonna have an issue with that. Um, I think it's reasonable that the, uh, that the municipality or the township puts in a, into our site plan agreement that we have to have a, uh, a contract uh, for the, um, uh, for the clean outs. And um, we would have to do that uh, for oil grid uh, separator uh, and the, the, um, the, the uh, sanitary. We, we want it to work. I'm gonna own this. I, I, I want it to be good. I wanna be a good neighbor. Uh, was there anything that I'm missing? Uh, the, the the access, yeah. I don't I, I don't think that's going to happen. The, the secondary access, I don't agree with it. I think it's uh, I, I think it opens a whole can of worms on a whole bunch of levels. And from the point of view of trying to save me money, oh, the developer doesn't want to pay. That's not a little bit. We're so close. It it would make zero difference. So maybe that's something that needs to be raised and addressed. Uh, we're raising it for the secondary access. Okay, uh, you're raising it, that, that's great. And I'm going on, on, on record just saying, I don't think it's necessary. Um, so it will be up to the council to decide. And, yep. and we'll okay, that's fine. Fair enough. That's and, fair enough. and the other issue is the sediment monitoring. Yeah, so, um, I, so you'll get yeah back I to mentioned it. that Right. Go ahead, Nancy. I would say somebody's going to explain to us who's responsible for that then, or well, it's I'm going to be a plan. I'm responsible for it, and in our in our in our uh, site plan agreement, um, and it is an agreement that I'll have to have a um, a contract ongoing signed for um, for that. For okay. The, you know, it's that's totally reasonable, and it's totally it's totally normal, by the way. Okay. Thank you. Something special that we'd be doing. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. So there seem to be a lot of hanging hats on. It's a retirement project. We don't need secondary access. I I still think it should be raised with the town of Prescott. Yeah, it doesn't need. It has been raised with the town of Prescott, uh, absolutely, and they've uh, and they've made their opinion known. Um, I think that you'd be doing an injustice because even if it's not a retirement project, in the worst case scenario, it's one car per five minutes. I, and I, I think it I, should be raised. I think it should be raised with council at the Monday meeting. That uh, would be, it, whether, whether the site has access to, you know, into Prescott or not into Prescott will end up being a, a site plan control matter of, of specific site design. I don't I don't believe that uh, from from the planning perspective that has any bearing on whether the site can be uh, rezoned for the, the the purposes that are being requested. Uh, but what I would say, Bob, is is that we will, uh, you know, uh, we will be sure to have discussions about the points that you've raised uh, with the various partners as we move forward to the site plan control uh, application stage. So I can raise these in a written format and they be raised at the council meeting on Monday. Well, I, I suppose you have that option. Yeah, I mean, if, if you'd like to bring forward, you know, I'd submit a written statement uh, to uh, to the clerk or if it's easier for you to you know, send it to me and I'll forward it to uh, Annette Simonian, who's the the clerk. Um, if you'd like to, to make a particular, uh, you know, comment or presentation to the the council uh, when, when it reviews the uh, the rezoning application, you're certainly welcome to do that. I would just, uh, you, I mean, my recommendation, I suppose, would be that uh, yeah, you you know you try to keep points that that are related more related to the the rezoning aspects of the of the project and and the site plan control. Uh, you know, uh, considerations. I I mean, I mean, it's your call. Your okay. if you feel, right, thank you. Appreciate it. Certainly welcome to uh, welcome to submit a statement if you wish. Good. Thank you. All right. So we had uh, we had we had Bonnie uh, Myron. Uh, no, just for uh, clarification, uh, yes, what's coming before council this Monday? If you want to have a delegation, it has to be in by the previous Wednesday. 
So there will not be an opportunity unless there's a unanimous vote by council to waive the procedural bylaw, which requires that the documentation that anybody wishes to submit to council at a council meeting be, uh, as I'm saying, in the municipal office on the previous Wednesday to the meeting. My understanding, though, is that discussion is going to touch on the site plan, which is coming up later um, at a later meeting. And I think that's a full opportunity to talk uh, about the site plan discussions that have been going on here. Uh, I, I have been reserved to be speaking here because it's a public meeting and it's not a forum for a member of council to be getting involved in the discussion other than my paying attention to it and seeing how generally it goes being aware of what the issues are and in the back of my mind always is trying to figure out, well, is there anything that I can do? Uh, all I can say to you, Bob, is that we've had lots of conversations with Prescott. Uh, we are in the paper uh, as to looking uh, about to, um, involved in stu joint studies for joint service delivery to see how we can work closer together. We're also working towards a joint RFP uh, to work with Prescott and to find out what are the investment um, and LECDEV opportunities uh, for both our municipalities working together? Um, we are trying to work as close as we can, uh, but I uh, I have to say to you, uh, just looking at Brockville and Elizabethtown Kitley, just because Elizabethtown Kitley wants some development, whether it be residential or commercial in its lot, um, I I don't think uh, I don't think there's a, a, a necessity for them. Uh, to be going to Brockville if it was Elizabeth um, Kitley and say, you need to do this in order for us to be able um, to go ahead with this development. We're trying to do it in a manner that is uh, going to benefit Augusta Township, Prescott, and our residents. We're going to try our best, but uh, after that, then it's a matter of being reasonable all around and just coming up with the best. I think we have an excellent developer builder here. Uh, who's got a tremendous reputation when he says he's he's going to build quality um, uh, units, you can believe him. And uh, he certainly comes with considerable experience. So these are many things to uh, to be uh, considered, but um, I, I certainly have uh, no, ob uh, no objection to you raising them uh, with council. Um, I think it's a good thing. It shows it will encourage the council who is very supportive of working with Prescott that that's a good thing. We're hearing it from a resident. Um, I certainly have no objection to continuing discussions with Prescott in order to see uh, what can be done. But in fairness, it's already had round one and that was their essentially their position. So Doug, thanks for the comments. Uh, I think you have to construe my comments as being the implementation of the project. Yeah. It's not yay or nay on the project. That's not my point. It's the implementation stages of the project. Those are my concerns. And if you look at my concerns, it's all about implementation. Yeah, I, I understand that, Bob. Uh, and uh, it's in the site plan that I look to staff to mitigate as much as they can. Uh, and uh, because the conversation is talking about um, the uh, uh, the outlet, we'll continue with the discussions and any of the other. Uh, but as I said, uh, right now, I think a legitimate proposal is being made here. Um, you have an opportunity to come and make a delegation with regard to the site plan. And uh, if you're able to convince uh, council to do something, then um, that's that's the opportunity for doing it. OK, thank you. I, OK. Okay, thank you very much, Mayor, and, and thank you, Bob, uh, as well. Um, I, I, I suppose rather than it, it, perhaps making a formal presentation, if, if you felt very strongly about certain points, Bob, uh, you would be welcome to, uh, if, if you wish to send those in to, my, to myself, uh, you know, following the, the conversation this evening, I would be willing to forward those on your behalf uh, to, to the various uh, members of Augusta Council for, for their consideration. I would make that make that offer to you. Um, I We did hear from Bonnie. Uh, I just want to give a, a third opportunity here for anybody that that wishes to to make a formal statement uh, in, in support of the proposal. Uh, just looking for uh, last kind of last call on that one. 
And OK, so we'll go on to the next uh, next section, which is uh, anybody anybody wishing to speak formally uh, formally registered to speak against the proposal. Again, we, we, we would just be looking for the spelling of first and last name and uh, your address, please, for anybody that would wish to uh, speak against the proposal. Just make a second call there. We'll do the one, two, three situation and a second call for anybody wishing to speak against the proposal. Uh, it's Mark again. Hi, Mark. Uh, hi. Um, as I said earlier, I, I think it's a fantastic proposal, but I, I think everybody's looking for a secondary access. And I think that needs to be uh, looked at seriously. I think, Rob, it looks spectacular. Like, congratulations. But from our perspective, we would like to see a secondary access. Thank you, thank you Mark. Uh, we certainly note that. Uh, would you like to have that, uh, just for my clarification, uh, would you like to have that formally registered uh, as, a, as a point of, of yourself speaking against the project? Or is that more just a, a statement that we might fit in perhaps more within the question uh period? Format of the meeting. Again, I, I think the project is uh, is going to enhance the area. Um, having said that, I, I think everybody, uh, you just heard Bob and uh, Nancy, um, Bonnie, myself, Karen, Brent, we're all saying the same thing. And I'm sure if other people were uh, knew about this meeting tonight, they would share that same comment. So I just think it's very, very important if council is going to move forward with this, which Sounds like the mayor has uh, suggested. Uh, we need to have that looked at. I I appreciate that. I just you know, for for my purposes of of documenting the the meeting for the public record. I just I would really like to clarify with you. Uh, are these comments that you would like to have uh, just noted as far as general comments raised during the no. discussion, or or no. would you like to formally register as someone that's against the project? To no, I I said uh, noted. Note so, note, note them. So, I, so I've noted the comments, but would yes. you like to be registered as by first not, and last name and address? I, I just I made the comment. I, I think it is going to enhance the area. Uh, well, having said that, it's a secondary lane. That's all we're asking. So just note that, please. That's all. Okay, certainly yes. Your yep. points points been noted. So so just for clarification, then you do not wish to be registered as as somebody that's against the project. That's what I said, yep, yep. Okay, thank, thank you very you. much. Uh, so we'll just put uh, another call out. We'll put that same question out. Uh, anybody wishing to speak against the proposal that would like to register to do that? And a third opportunity here, kind of third and last call. Uh, anybody wishing to speak against the proposal? All right, going once, going twice. With that in mind, uh, we thank you all very much. Uh, we had a really good uh, discussion here tonight. Number of very, very good uh, points raised. Uh, thank you, everyone, very much for, for your participation, uh, for your uh, you know for your involvement, for supporting the planning process. Uh, I, I mean, I think we're all we're all here on the same page here that we all want this development to be the the best that it can be. Uh, we don't want to see things that go up that are that are going to create uh, a negative impacts um, for for our community members or for our 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 neighboring municipalities. Um, you know, we're here in, in a spirit of cooperation uh, to uh, to try to bring forward proposals that are that are going to be of community interest. Uh, and actually, the 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 public meeting that follows this one is is on the topic of a community improvement plan that seeks to uh, that seeks to uh, you know find ways to to continue making the community uh, even even better than than it is. So once again, uh, thank you very much to everyone uh, for attending here tonight. Uh, uh, the the local residents who have participated uh, to the uh, to the technical uh, experts from IBI and to Rob and, and Tyler for participating. Uh, and uh, and for everyone, uh, thank you so much. Uh, hope everyone has a great evening. And again, if anybody uh, wishes to be formally notified of the uh, of the decision that hasn't already uh, requested that, uh, please please make that request in writing if that's something that you would wish to receive. Okay. Thank you, Myron. Thanks, Myron. Thank you so much, everyone. Bye,
anyone that's staying for the uh, the next meeting, you're certainly welcome to stay on for the next meeting and uh, and to everyone else. Beautiful uh, sunset tonight, people. Let's get have next Thank you. Good night. Thank Thanks you all. Rosa. Good night. I'm, I'm going to stay on here myself. We've got another meeting following up this one. Um, it looks like uh, looks like Ray and Jonas. It's just the three of us. Uh, if uh, if Jonas is there, I, I have you on mute here at the moment, Ray. But uh, would Jonas be interested in staying for the uh, for the next public meeting? Uh, if so, perhaps it may be easier if I uh, pop over to uh, to council chambers and we can have a, a good discussion. What what would you recommend? If you leave your um, screen on, because I think if you leave as the host, you cut it off. I don't yeah. that may rejoin us. I don't know if he realizes this is okay. the second meeting. So okay. I'm going to I'm going to text him on another one while you're coming and we okay. can get through this. Okay. okay. That's great. Yep. Thank you so much. Um, uh, let's see. I wonder then uh, I have another PowerPoint. Uh, would it be worth me uh, just kind of going through that that why PowerPoint? Don't just, oh, why don't you just do it? Uh, Jonas has it all in print here. Yeah. Why don't you rip through it from there? And if the Doug joins while you're doing it, we'll just fold them in. OK, yeah, that sounds good. Now, Ray, from a recording standpoint, would we be from a record standpoint, would we be better off kind of closing the first recording and then opening a second recording or should we just let the recording run right through and we'll catch the uh, the second meeting in with the first? I think just from a management of it, we should stop it. Yeah, uh, wait a minute or whatever and start the next one. OK. All right, so I think it's got yourself had started the recording. Would you be willing, Ray, to to stop the recording and then we'll uh, 